Uh, let's see, I'm talking with Paul Newman, in case anyone just joined us um, and doesn't know who either of us is. <laughs> we, uh, oh, there's a film that you did called WUSA that's just coming out, and no one has told me what the title stands for, and all day I've been thinking of things that WUSA stands for, like... Woosa. Woosa. Or walking usually stretches arthritis or something. I can't... <laughs> uh, no, it's the name of a, uh, of a mythical right-wing, it's the cost letters for a, radio, a right-wing radio station. Oh. So it has a political theme, more yeah. or less. Oh, yeah. What makes some actors political and some not? You took a lot of uh, active, uh, you took an active role in the McCarthy campaign, and, and uh, just today in the paper you, you were with uh, Mr. Duffy. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I suppose if you get into all the complicated reasons, it's, uh, it sounds kind of pretentious or academic or whatever it is. It's uh, first you say, well, I don't want my citizenship taken away because I became an actor and if I carry mm -hmm. more weight than my credentials allow, and you make all of those apologies and so forth. And what it finally boils down to is a couple of things is that you count up your number of children and I think the political commitment somehow with me grew every time I had another child. No, the lady had the child. I had some. What and, a memory. And, uh, and uh, also, I think uh, it's convenient for some people to stay out of a hassle. I've never, uh, I've always, and I don't mean that as uh, that I should be pat on the back for that, because some guys get into the hassle so big they can't do anything else. They can't shake hands with another person or, or reach out to another human being. But uh, I... I, there's something in me that digs the hassle, and uh, I get involved in it. What attracted you to the, to the Duffy campaign? What, what's the problem there? Well, I'm a resident of the state of Connecticut. The state of Connecticut has never had a primary to nominate uh, a Democratic uh, contender to run against a Republican. I mean, that's always, it's always been designated by some incredible power that lurks 3,000 feet above Hartford or something, and they pass the words down to the delegates and so forth. And I, I think the only chance politically that we have uh, to survive is to somehow crack that machinery and uh, bring back a sense of participating politics and uh, send the word from, from downstairs upstairs as to who we want to do this. So for the first time, the people, the Democratic uh, registered Democrats will have a chance to to vote rather than have the word sent down from above. I mean, even if we've only accomplished that much, that's uh, uh, so we have done that much because we were a whisper when we first got started. Mr. And Duffy's after Senator Dodd's seat. Uh, yes, a, a number of people have been after that part of Senator Dodd, but. Uh, <laughs> Was including, that the, including the Bureau of Internal Revenue. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And the entire United States Senate. I never realized that phrase had two meanings, but uh, was that part of what attracted you to the uh, No, it, it isn't that. Uh, I, uh, the fact that Senator Dodd was censured is, uh, only means, I suppose, in the final analysis that he was caught. Uh, and that really isn't the issue. I think... <laughs> Duffy has been such a gentleman about this whole thing. He's, he has a, a current respect uh, for Senator Dodd. The only thing, he has differences of opinions with him. And he's prepared to take those issues to the people and forget about uh, that moment of unpleasantness and say, hey, I feel this way about uh, welfare and uh, oil depletion allowance and hiding in the cloakroom and a lot of other things. And uh, I'm prepared to go out and debate these with him. And D uh, Duffy's the only one that I think, uh, Duffy's the only one that, that I honestly think uh, Dodd is prepared to debate. Because I think Duffy's the only one who knows why he's running against uh, mm. Dodd. And when you go along with someone like that, or as you did with Senator McCarthy, or when a great, when a, a big film star goes with a candidate, isn't there a danger of detracting attention or, or being the center of attention? Uh, how do you keep that in proportion? Or is it a problem at all? I mean, obviously well, a lot of people will come to see you, don't they? Well, the only thing I care about in the final analysis is, is that people listen to what he has to say. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't go out as a partisan 
Democrat or an anti-Republican or an, anything. I just say there's some people that ought to be listened to, and mm -hmm. you must then uh, make up your mind about uh, how you feel about what they say. That's all. Either you like dig what he says about the escalation into Cambodia, or you don't. And final analysis. You dig what he says about national priorities and what the national mentality, what, what, where the national energy should, should be directed. I get, uh, I get despondent, I suppose, and I despair as, uh, as much as the next person at the size of things and the acceleration of things and the irreversibility of certain things, but uh, uh, I don't know. My God, they're interesting times, though, aren't they? Yes, there's a... There's a quote, I've heard it misquoted, but uh, I, I think it was, uh, it's sometimes attributed to Confucius, uh, but I don't think it is Confucius, it's some other oriental sage who said, may you not have the ill luck to be born in interesting times. I just thought of that when you said that phrase. As a matter of uh, fact, I said that phrase on a show that I did. Uh, You're the oriental up. sage I'm thinking Aha. of. Aha. <laughs> so. Do you ever worry about the uh, segment of your fans that you may alienate who may love you in the movies, but they don't agree with you politically? Oh, I don't know. I guess that can't really be a consideration. Yeah. That's the, you know, in, in politics, it's really so interesting to find it. Uh, the most refreshing thing that I've found about Duffy, and the fact is he never sidetracks, if he gets a question, he never sidetracks the answer. I mean, I've seen very smart uh, people in politics, mm -hmm. Bill Buckley being a very good incident of that, mm -hmm. who can so absolutely talk around the subject and never really answer the question, but having given the impression of talking for 10 minutes, you go away reeling uh, yeah. with the idea, well, he, there must be something going on in there. And it's almost required in politics, No, I but think. that's what I say. Mm -hmm. I, it's interesting. I suppose if you offend nobody in the final analysis, you have no character. And Duffy does not seem to be a friend, afraid of saying what he thinks, figuring that the sincerity, at least, and the fact that he will talk about issues and uh, attack them directly, is, I say, is such a refreshing thing in politics that I am wooed by it, and uh, I give so many points for that. Your heart goes out to that. Yeah, yeah. Poor, poor fella.